Turn to Christ and live. Hello. I always see you here and I'm never able to stop. Well, I'm glad you did. My name's Tony. Hi, I'm CJ. Hi, CJ. So, I have a request. Okay. Could you pray for me? Yes, how could I pray for you? Okay. Are you, am I, are, are we like online? <laughs> That's okay. Don't worry about it. No, you're not online. Okay. <laughs> not online. No, this is not live. It's I'm, not a game no, show. No, I know, I know. I'm okay. like, technically, no, I'm off work. Okay. 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 Um, I don't know. I want to get... So I was in 180 and I got really yeah, into- Our church did some work down there at 180. Okay, in yeah. fact, that building, 180, used mm -hmm. to be our church. We actually sold it to 180. Oh, Yeah, nice. several years okay. ago, but. Well, I got into a bad relationship, bad into drugs, which I was, anyway, blah, blah, blah. I'm sober now, been sober for a long time. Good for you, praise thank, God. Thank you, yeah. And um, I just, I cannot get in the Bible. I try. I, I, I watch videos, listen to people, you know, and I, I my heart's in it. But I literally cannot open the Bible and just start. So I really? don't know why, if there's why something. That? Why do you think that is? I mean, obviously you thought about it. We're, you stopped. I don't know. It, I mean, you, you, can... you thought about it enough to stop and talk about it. So I mean, honestly, what, like, what do you think it is? You can open up doors by doing things you're not supposed to. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't know. Like that's that's what I've heard. <laughs> so when you try to open the Bible, what happens? I just lose. I lose interest, honestly. Or I don't even have the interest to do like. I have the interest on my heart is in it, but my mind isn't, I guess I should say. Okay. Interesting thing, the mind is directly connected to the heart. Right. You know, the, uh, Jesus said, out of the abundance of our heart, mm -hmm. our mouth speaks. Right? So, um, the the inner person, right. the heart, not the lump of flesh, right. but the inner person, the heart, is actually what governs the mind. Right? So, if your mind's not in it, mm -hmm. your heart's not in it either. Now, now we I could be. I want to be in can, it. Okay, great, great. Obvious. Well, that's you obvious. Know. We're talking about it. Obvious. Yeah, yeah. Obvious. So, so what are your particular spiritual beliefs, Vera? What do you believe? Oh, I believe in God. I definitely okay. believe in God. I see the times that we are in right now, yeah. like for real. Uh huh. People like think I'm crazy, but I mean, we are living in the, the end times. Yeah. So let, let me ask you this, Vera. Mm -hmm. Since we've known each other for two minutes now. Yeah. Ask me anything. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> If you were to die today, and I don't want that. Right. But if you were to die today and you found yourself standing before God, uh -huh. and God said, Vera, why should I allow you into heaven? What would you say? You know, I don't, I don't think I'd have, I mean, I'm a good person, but am I a good person according to the Bible? You know what I mean? Okay. All There's, right. I mean, God has commandments and laws and things you think that you're a person, supposed to be following. Now, Vera, obviously, none of us are perfect. Right. Right. Um, but do you think you need to be a good person to be to be allowed into heaven? Well, I think so, but I also think that we're here to serve the Lord and glorify Him, and I don't do that. You know what I mean? Okay. I mean, I do... But being a good person is part of it. Right. Okay. So, let me take you through this little impromptu test. Okay. Okay. Now, everything I'm going to ask you, mm -hmm. I'm guilty of. Okay. Okay, so there's no judgment in right. this. All right. right? Uh, Jesus said this. He said, you are to be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. Now, I haven't lived a perfect day in my yeah. life, okay? Right, right. But yet, that is God's standard. Mm -hmm. So if we're gonna put any hope at all, uh, any hope of heaven at all in our goodness, then our goodness has to measure up to God's standard of goodness, mm -hmm. and that standard's perfection. Right. Okay, so right. 
Now you're familiar with the Ten Commandments, yes. right? Mm -hmm. How do you think you've done with those in your life? As far pretty, as keeping them overall, or? Overall pretty well. Okay, all right. Have you ever told a lie? Oh yeah. Okay. Um, I'd if, be lying if I said no. Okay, <laughs> all right, all right. So if I were to lie to you, you'd refer to me as? A liar. Okay. Have you ever stolen anything even if it's small? Yes. Okay. Uh, and again, everything you're, you may answer yes to, right. I'm going to be able to answer yes to as well. Right, okay. right. Okay, all right. Um, the Bible says that you shall not murder. Right. I'm guessing you probably never killed never anybody. Never done that. Okay. <laughs> but Bible also says whoever hates another person yes. is a murderer. A murderer. Yes. Right. Have you ever hated anybody? Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, I'm guessing you probably didn't perfectly obey your parents no. growing up, no. right? One of the commandments is to honor your mother right, and father. Right. right, I do now. <laughs> okay, all right. And without going into any detail, it's none right. of my business. Right. But have you been sexually pure perfectly no. all of your life? Have you ever looked at another person and had an yes. inappropriate thought? Yes. Right, Jesus called that adultery. Right, all right. right. So we've looked at several of them. Right. By way of review, Right. Vera, by your own admission, mm -hmm. right, lying, lying, thieving, mm -hmm. adultering, murderer mm -hmm. who dishonors her parents right <laughs> now it, i have three daughters at home all adults well two two are married one's still at home if, if my daughter still at home brought a young man home and said dad i'd like you to meet tom right tom's a lying thieving murdering <laughs> right. adulterer who dishonors his parents but other than that he's a great guy right yeah. so does that sound like a good person to you no no okay so here's the problem God is good, and we're not, okay? Because God is good, he's going to judge each of us. Um, he's not going to compare Vera to Tony. Right. He's not going to compare Tony to Vera. Right. He's going to compare us to the law that he's actually written on our hearts. Right. Those, that law that I went over a little bit of it with you, that's all written on your heart. You have a conscience. You know the difference yeah. between right and wrong. God's going to find us guilty because we've all broken that law. Yeah. Um, have you ever been in the courtroom before? Yeah. Okay. So let's say, Vera, uh, this is all hypothetical. I'm not right. suggesting you would do this. Right, right. Just to paint a picture. Okay. So let's say instead of come, stopping and having a nice conversation with me, mm -hmm. you decide you're going to go rob the Shell station instead, right? right? Okay. And you're no good at it. And you get caught. Right. Right. Not a case of mistaken identity, not a corrupt cop, not a... A jury that wasn't smart enough to get out of jury duty mm -hmm. you actually did the crime in fact you felt you felt remorse for it mm -hmm. you felt remorse for it and you decided to write out a confession no one coerced you no DA no scandalous attorney mm -hmm. promised you made a false promise or anything right, like right. that um, you just felt remorse and so yeah I did it I'm gonna own up to it well the interesting thing about confessions is they never show a person's innocence, they only show their guilt. Right. And a confession repentance. is... Right, well, <laughs> repentance is turning away from... Right, right. right, okay. So, but you're entitled to your day in court. And so you go to trial, you're found guilty, the confession is entered into evidence, witness testimony, what have you. You knew you were guilty going in, and you know you're guilty going out. It's the day of sentencing. And... The judge asks Vera, what do you have to say for yourself? And you say, well, Your Honor, nobody's perfect, but I'm basically a good person. Right. And I'm going to try never to do this again. In fact, I'm going to repent of it. Right. I'm never going to rob another gas station as long as I live. And I think you ought to just <laughs> let me go. Okay. Is the judge going to let you go? Yeah. No. All right. So in this particular case, Vera, because you have a lifetime of history of violating the law, right, like we all do in our heart, right. the judge sentences you to death. They're going to whisk you into the next room immediately, no appeals. They're going to strap you to a gurney and they're going to put you to sleep like a stray dog. But before that happens, Vera, the judge... CJ. Oh, oh, <laughs> sorry. oh is no, it Vera's no, the name of the company? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't catch that person and I'm like, I don't want to embarrass Who's them, Vera? Like, I'm not really a Vera. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's okay. CJ. No, okay. You're okay. You're okay. okay. Sorry. Yeah, I saw Vera French and I thought, no, oh, that's her it name. Seems like that's, I heard that. I'm um, like, oh, it's my name tag. And then I didn't realize it was turning. <laughs> okay. All right. You're fine. Though. Okay. All right. So. I'm getting the point, though. <laughs> okay. So that judge steps down, the judge who found you guilty and alone had the authority to sentence you to death. Mm -hmm. And he uh, takes off those black robes of authority and he walks over to you and he says, CJ, you are guilty and the penalty is death and I'm going to take your place. 
and the judge walks into the next room, allows himself to be strapped to a gurney with your name on it, allows a needle to be driven into his arm with your name on it, and he dies the death that you're supposed to die, and you're set free. The courtroom, you can't believe it. Right. The courtroom is like exploding. They can't believe it. Right. Your, your attorney's jaws hit the table. The DA's angry right, because that right. shouldn't have happened. The, the victims are going, where's the justice? Right. Your family's crying. I can't believe she's been set free. Mm -hmm. And so you gather your belongings. They release you. You walk out of the front door down at Davenport on 4th Street. Right. And of course, small town, it's not Chicago. Everybody's heard about this. The media is all lined up outside the courthouse. They want to talk to one person. It's you, CJ, yes. <laughs> formerly known as Vera. Right, <laughs> AKA, Vera. AKA Vera. <laughs> CJ, we heard what happened. What do you think? I said, well, I, I told the judge I was a basically good person and I asked him to let me go. And so it's really no big deal what he did. I thought I should be let go. Yeah, I can even see by the look on your face, like that doesn't sound right at all. <laughs> right. But yet, but yet that's actually what most people do with God. See, that picture I painted is right. a picture of what God actually did. Right. God the Father sent His Son to earth in the person of Jesus Christ, truly God, truly man, without sin. Right. He lived a life of perfection for some 33 years that Tony and CJ can't live for 33 seconds. Right. Yet even though he knew no sin and was God in the flesh, he voluntarily submitted himself to the torturous bloody death of a Roman cross, right. died a death he did not deserve to take upon himself the punishment you and I rightly deserve for all of our crimes against God, our sins. Right. And then he forever defeated sin and death when we rose from the grave. And it is not enough to simply believe that in our head. Right. We actually have to believe that in our heart right. to the point that we turn from our sin. You mentioned repentance. Right. But in that turning away from sin, we actually have to turn toward someone, and that right. is Christ, right. and put our faith and our trust in Him alone for our salvation. Mm. And Vera, until... It's CJ! i will be known as Vera. No. Oh, you'll be Vera to me. <laughs> CJ. <laughs> CJ, that Bible is never going to come alive to you until Christ is alive in you. The Bible says that the word of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to those who are being saved, it is the power of God. Before I came to faith in Christ in 1988, mm -hmm. you know, 35, almost 36 right. years ago, that book meant nothing right. to me. Right. Thin pages, little words, yeah. I couldn't understand yeah, it, and I and I didn't care. Right. I didn't even care. Right. But the day, the day that Jesus Christ saved me, the day that he caused me to be born again and gave me a new heart, I immediately wanted to know that book. And not just so I can have some intellectual knowledge. Right. But because I wanted to know the author, I wanted to know the one who wrote the book. Right. And that was Jesus Christ. What Bible so, do you read? What kind of what you read? Well, I mean, I um, there are a number of really good English translations. In fact, right. I want to give you a Bible today, if that's okay. Yeah. yeah. In fact, it's a really special Bible, and and nothing magical about it or anything. But this is why. Some man who hates God, mm -hmm. drove by earlier today screamed something at me and threw a Bible at me. Oh my God. Right. Uh, there was a man named Joseph in the Old Testament. His brothers sold him into slavery to Egypt. And God ends up using that. Joseph becomes the second leader in Egypt to Pharaoh. And all of Joseph's brothers, 20, 30 years later, show up in Egypt looking for food in the famine, mm -hmm. and their brother who they sold into slavery is the one who's yep. in charge of the food. Do you remember that story? So at the end of all of that, they're all reconciled together. Joseph brings all of his family um, from where they were staying in the famine to the best land, Goshen, in Egypt. And the brothers are all afraid, what is our brother going to do to us? Right. Joseph says, what you intended for evil, what man intended for evil, God is going yeah. to use for good. What that man intended for evil today and throwing that Bible right. at me, God's going to use for good because I'm going to put it in your hand. 
okay? But until you put your faith and your trust in Christ alone for your salvation, mm -hmm. it's never going to be any more than a book. Right. Okay? And so I'm no mind reader, I'm not a prophet or the right. son of a prophet. But I, I know what the Bible says, and I know what it's meant in my own life and other people who have come to faith in Christ mm -hmm. who have similar stories of, I couldn't understand it. Right. Well, the reason was I had no relationship with the one who wrote it. Right. Right. I didn't care to read it. Um, if if I if I was in the if I was in the military and, and uh, sent overseas, and my wife says, Tony, I'm going to write you a letter every day because uh, I want to I want you to know that I love you, and I want you to let you know what's going on here at home, mm -hmm. and I want to encourage you. So I'm going to write you a letter every day, and she does for the next two months. Two, two months, almost nine weeks, she writes me 66 letters, one after another, and I receive them all. And um, I get sent back home, my tour of duty is over, I take all of those letters with me, and I get home, and my wife's happy to see me, and she says, Tony, I never heard from you. I was worried about you, I never heard from you. Did you get my letters? Yeah, I got all of them, they're right here. Right. And she looks at them and they've never been open. I didn't read any of them. I said, yeah, honey, I got all of your letters and right. I'm really thankful for your letters. Right, thanks. And I love you. Yeah. And she looks at the fact that she wrote 66 letters to me and I never read any of them. I didn't care. Right. God has given us 66 letters in one book mm -hmm. in the Bible. There are 66 books in the Bible to tell us who he is to tell us who his son is, to tell us who we really are, and to show us the way to have our sins forgiven mm -hmm. and to be reconciled to him through faith in his son, Jesus Christ. Right. But until that, until that is actually real in your own life, until you have turned from your sin and put your trust in Christ alone for your salvation, mm -hmm. that's gonna be a frustrating piece of literature. Oh, I wanna be on fire for God. <laughs> then, it begin. It be, It doesn't begin. It doesn't begin with you. Right. It begins with Christ. It begins with you putting your faith and your trust in Christ alone for your salvation. So, if it was switched, and you were standing here with the cross and with Bible signs, and and I stopped and, and said, "Hey, I'd like you to pray for me," and I'm having a hard time getting into the Bible, and you asked me, Tony, if you were to die today, and God asked you why He should allow you into heaven. What would you say? I would say, based on what I've learned in that book, I would say, God, you shouldn't. You shouldn't let me in. Because I've broken your law every day of my life. Right. What I deserve is hell. Right. But I know you're going to let me in. Not because of who I am, but in spite of who I am. Not because of what I've done, right. but in spite of what I've done. I know you're going to let me in because of what your son did on my behalf. And your word promises me that if I put my faith and my trust in your son and in him alone, you're going to forgive my sin. You're going to remove them as far as the east is from the west. You're going to remember them no more. I'm going to be reconciled to you. And I'm going to have the assurance of heaven and eternal life. And I take you at your word. So I know you're going to let me in because you're good and I'm not. So that's where my assurance lies. Uh -huh. And you could have that assurance too. Yeah, that makes sense. Right? Can you pray for me? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Father, I am so thankful that CJ, not Vera, <laughs> I'm so thankful, Father, that CJ stopped to talk. I'm, I'm thankful, Father, for the, the common grace that you've extended to her, Father, in, in blessing her with sobriety. Thank you, Father, for that kind gift. I'm thankful, Father, uh, for her for her expressed desire to be able to read your word and to understand it. I pray for CJ, Father, that you would give her a new heart with new desires, that she would begin to love the things that you love, namely yourself, that she would begin to hate the things that you hate, not other people, but namely her own sin. And that, Father, by faith and by faith alone, she would receive Jesus Christ as her Lord and her Savior. And Father, that you would cause her to be born again to a living hope. 
and that as you have done so graciously for me, you will do for her. You will make your living word come alive to her. Father, we could spend a lifetime even having our eyes opened and our, and our minds renewed and our hearts changed, we can spend a lifetime and, and not completely understand everything your word has for us. But Father, for those whom you draw to yourself, who you literally adopt as sons and daughters through faith in Jesus Christ, you bless them with the indwelling of your Holy Spirit who convicts us of sin and righteousness and judgment and and your word promises us that your spirit will lead us into all truth and i ask father on behalf of cj lord not knowing what your ultimate will is for her but i ask father pleading with you that you would save her that you would fill her with your spirit and that you would lead her to all truth for your glory in jesus name amen Thank you. Amen. Let me get that you know, Bible it's funny, for you. Because yeah. I see you here all the time, and I was always going to stop, but I'm I, I'm at work, so I'm you, not you'd driving. You'd be amazed anymore. how many people say the exact same thing. And then today, I and today I, was the day. Yeah. Well, I went to go get something to drink. I'm like, you know what? I'm off work now, but you know what? If I drive back down there and he's there, I'm stopping. And and CJ. 25 minutes ago, I was getting ready to pack up because I was getting cold. Oh, I bet. <laughs> right. No. And and in God's providence, in God's timing. So yeah, this is this is the Bible that the man threw at me. Oh, landed well, that the, one was meant for me. La exactly. <laughs> landed in the middle of the street. Traffic actually stopped so that I could go out and pick it up. And, and there was one of the ladies from our church, and it's in good shape, it's not yeah, broken or yeah. anything, but one of the ladies of the church was out here with me, and I said, if anyone else stops for a Bible, they're gonna get this Bible today. That's awesome. And so that's yours. That's a sign, see? And I'd like to give you my card. Okay. No salesman will come to your door. <laughs> um, all the information about our church is in there. You're, okay. you're welcome. What church now is this? It's uh, uh, Grace Fellowship Church. Do you know where the Walmart is off of West Kimberly? Yeah. So we're just, you know where Harlan's is, the restaurant? Mm -hmm. We're just past Harlan's yes. on Kimberly. One of the churches I've never been to. I've been to probably oh, yeah? around here. Yeah. yeah, and you're welcome. And uh, as you read this, as you read this, if you have any questions or anything, text me, call me. Okay. I'm not the sharpest tack in the box, <laughs> but I've been reading it for 35 years. Right, so. right. And if you would ever like, mm -hmm. You're welcome to join me and my family for dinner sometime, and we Thank could yeah. read it together, talk about it, that just awesome. spend time I'm, together. I'm gonna. It's everything. entirely up to you. Okay. CJ, God nice bless you. you. Good meeting yeah, you. Thank you so much. Thank you, CJ. Have a great night. Yep, you too. You made my day. You did. You made mine too. Praise the Lord.